Good day. My name is Blake Cauley. I am the product manager for the Amatech Factory Automation Group of Products. Today we're going to talk about the Gemco 1999 Similex Safety Meter. This is designed to measure stopping time uh, of, of a machine. So, totally portable unit, and I'm actually going to take the cover off just for demo purposes so you can see it easier. But the unit consists of three main components. The electronics right here, which is battery operated, and you can charge it using the AC power cord right here. We have the position velocity transducer, which is going to measure speed and position of the machine that's moving. And we have what we call the auto hand, which is going to uh, trigger either push an e-stop button, release a two-hand control, or throw a flag through a light curtain to cause the machine to come to stop. So looking at the unit, we're going to review, first of all, the front panel right here. As I mentioned, it's battery operated, so there's an on-off switch right here. You turn it on, it stays on for a few minutes. If you forget to shut it off, it'll automatically shut itself back off. There's an indicator LED right here that will tell you when the battery is going low and when it needs to be charged. If you hit the button again, it would simply shut it off, but if you don't hit the button, it'll time itself out and shut itself off. Two uh, connectors on here, one to connect the auto hand up and the other connect the position velocity transducer. There's a four digit display right here, which will display your stopping time either in milliseconds up to 9,999 milliseconds or safety distance up to 999.9 inches. Uh, and there's the button right here that says, uh, am I measuring stopping time or in milliseconds or am I measuring safety distance? So our formulas are based upon the OSHA hand speed constant, saying that your hand can move 63 inches per second. Then we have another switch here, which we call either the full rev or the part rev press. Just about every press I know today is a, is a part rev, which means it has a clutch and a brake on there, and it can stop partway through the revolution. A full revolution press, once it starts making movement, it has to make a complete cycle. Then we have a... a dial or a switch right here that says, what direction do we want to measure stopping time? Do I want to measure it going down or do I want to measure it going back up? Just about every case we measure it going down, but there are some useful uh, things for measuring it going back up, such as counterbalance pressure to make sure it's set correctly. Then the next one is the what we call the control start point. And here it's, it's a dial with, with a lock on here, and I can turn this to any number I want. So right now this says 18.5 inches. So that's where we would initiate a test uh, of the system. So inside of the position velocity transducer, there's a potentiometer and there's a tachometer. The potentiometer is telling me the position and the tachometer is telling me the speed. And from there, when and this is on a magnetic type base where I can put to the bed of the press or a stationary part of the machine. And then I have a cable that will stroke out and it'll stroke out four feet uh, in, stroke, in stroke length. If you need it to be longer, we have extension cables that are included with it so we can measure longer than a four foot distance. So basically when this is connected to the machine, it's gonna be fully open. And when the control start point, which right now is set to 18.5 inches, equals the distance right here of 18.5 inches, we're going to initiate a test. And then I look at the time down, so it says I'm only going to initiate the test as it's moving down. So as this starts moving down, it got to the 18 inch point, it looked until I saw no more movement on the position velocity transducer, and it said that the safety, the milliseconds, it took 681 milliseconds to stop. And based upon the OSHA formula says you, your controls would have to be back 43.3 inches. From there, we're gonna jump into the device that we call the auto hand. And the auto hand is designed to either release a two hand control, push an e-stop button, or throw a flag through a light curtain. So it comes with some, some accessories right here. And the first is we have a plunger right here that's uh, with a spring. So I'm simply gonna cock this. And we use the auto hand like it's one of your hands uh, to push the two hand control. So if I went to uh, a mechanical stamping press or your, your, your machine in question, your measuring stopping time, and I push the two hand control, your machine would start. 
So look, I'll simulate right here as it'll start, and it would start moving, and when it hit that 18 and a half inch point, it measured how long it, it took to come to a stop. In this case, I stopped it a little bit different with my hand, so it says 39 inches or 619 milliseconds. We, and if you're testing a two-hand control, we would, we would release the button. If I wanted to test an e-stop button, I would simply take my plunger, cock it right here. I have these extension feet that I can screw right into the body. Here, I have three of these. Simply screw that in. I won't screw them in all the way. And then I could simply hold this over the e-stop button right here. So now when the press strokes or the machine strokes, it's going to push the e-stop button. The third thing that we can do is we can put what we call the auto flag on there. And the auto flag is designed to, to throw it through a light curtain. So what I would do, I just switch out the accessory right here. I would hold this right to the side of the, of the light curtain, just out of the sensing area. I would then stroke the press or the machine, and it would simply throw the light curtain through there and measure the, the stopping time. Uh, we also have other accessories for measuring rotary position or manually doing a test. We'll cover that in a, in a different chapter. Thank you.